myself, Professor Pawar B.K. from Department of Geography, JET Art Science and Commerce College for Women, Malegao. On behalf of this video presentation, I welcome you all. Red tides have several toxic algae. Some of these algal species produce toxins that attack the nervous system of fish, leading to massive mortality. When these fish are eaten by seabirds, they also die. Consumption of such fishes end up killing marine mammals and affecting fish eating humans. Algal blooms are dangerous even after they die. They sink to the bottom and reduce the oxygen supply. Such conditions become dangerous to bottom dwelling organisms such as crabs, oysters and clams. Algal blooms greatly affect fisheries, aquaculture, tourism and water sports. Now you see the next effect of marine pollution that is number 5 that is entitled as effects of nuclear tests and dumping of nuclear wastes into seas and oceans. Developed countries which produce radioactive substances test them for their potential and finally discharge their nuclear wastes in the seas and oceans considering that silent ocean is the most suitable place for testing and dumping, forget the hazardous consequences of their activities. Nuclear pollution is most hazardous as its effects persist from generations to generations can last for many years or centuries together. The next effect of marine pollution can be entitled as effects on coral reefs. Marine pollution affects coral reefs adversely. The increased inflow of sewage and sediments leads to excessive growth of algae and the submerged vegetation which clogs the corals and reduce oxygen supply to the coral animals. The corals become brittle and stunted in such areas. A rising temperature of water around the reefs leads to the bleaching of corals. Mared coral reefs adversely affect the marine tourism. Now, we will deal with the next topic that is the control of marine pollution. That is how the marine pollution can be controlled or some of the strategies or ways to control the marine pollution. Control of marine pollution is not an easy task. Rather, it requires awareness, cooperation, skilled training, government support, etc. Now, we can suggest some control measures for marine pollution such as number one, a ban should be imposed against dumping of waste garbages along seashores. Number two, input of fertilizers, pesticides and industrial effluents into the river should not be allowed. Number three, effluents should be discharged only after the proper treatments. Number four, standard quality of oil tankers and cargo ships should be set and followed to minimize oil spillage accidents. Number five, ban should be imposed on nuclear testing and on dumping of nuclear waste into the ocean. Number six, causes of eutrophication of seawater should be minimized. Sewage and organic waste discharges must be done after proper treatments or in proper systems. Number seven, during recent years, several techniques have been developed to minimize loss due to oil spillage. Number one, we will see the physical containment of soil is carried out mainly by the placement of specially designed floating blooms. The oil can then be mechanically collected off the water surface by specialized oil skimming barges, surface pumps, floating 
absorbents, etc. Number two, chemical control methods have also been worked out. Chemical dispersants help in breaking up surface oil clicks into numerous droplets which are then dispersed into the large volumes of water and carried away. Number third is bioremediation process is a recent method to reduce loss occurring due to oil spillage. The process involves the degradation of organic containments as a result of biochemical activities of microorganisms. Such bacteria convert complex organic substances into substances like fatty acids and carbon dioxide. Some new strains of pseudomonas have been developed by genetic engineering techniques which break hydrocarbons into simpler compounds rapidly and reduce such pollution. Such bacteria have been popularly called superbugs. The superbugs are capable of decomposing hydrocarbons at a faster rate than the natural strains. And number four, some cheap absorbents like sawdust, peat moss, pine bark, etc. are sometimes used to absorb and prevent further spreading of the spilled oil. At times, synthetic absorbents like polyethylene and polyurethanes are also used. A large amount of oil can be removed from the sea surface by collecting out these absorbents after they have absorbed sufficient oil.